Good morning. Good morning. The first unity principle states that there is only one power and one presence in the universe, and that is God the Omnipotent. So we at Unity honor the many names of and the many paths to God. Will you please stand for our invocation? We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit, in thy divine wisdom, now erase our mortal limitations. And from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. And our Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And would you please turn uh, to hymn number 142, Thou art the source of all good. 142. Some people 
who during the last few years have been making a special study of the mind find it a fact that certain wrong or false beliefs held by us are really the cause of all sorts of trouble, physical, moral, and financial. They have learned that wrong, or as they call them, error, beliefs arise only in the human mind. They have learned and actually proven that we can, by a persistent effort of the will, change the beliefs, and by this means alone, entirely change our troublesome circumstances and bodily conditions. And okay, lessons and truth. So this Sunday we're going. To, so this Sunday we're talking about uh, today's talk is um, is uh, Ground Zero. This is the second part. Ground Zero: Rebuilding Jerusalem. And the theme for today's talk talk is another major period um, in the uh, for, for the children of Israel. As far as uh, in the Bible, um, the Reconstruction era it was right after the exilic period, um, where they, the children of Israel had been in exile for seventy years, and they were in Babylon. and And at the beginning of the Reconstruction period, uh, the kingdom of Babylon was conquered by the kingdom of Persia. And so the Persian king, King Cyrus, then issued a royal decree that all of the children of Israel were then to return to their homeland and rebuild their city and their sacred temple. <coughs> when they arrived, now this is again 70 years, so the people that initially were exiled, most of them were gone. So you had a new generation of young people, and they had been in Babylon. You know, they didn't have one God, they had many gods. What is this Bible going with one God, one God? You know? And so they come back, and the walls of this, of this once great city and the great temple were now in ruin. And they didn't have the, the identity that they had before they were exiled. They didn't know who they were. They didn't know about their true inheritance. They didn't know these things. There were two priests, Nehemiah and Ezra, who helped guide and steer them back to the ways of Judaism and the ways of their forefathers. And so, metaphorically, we too have been in exile. We've been in exile as far as for the past several years. Lockdown with COVID. And so now we're returning. And whether we realize it or not, we are a new people. Our consciousness has changed. Our consciousness was changed over, the, over those past two years when we were in quarantine. We are not the same people who we were. Before the, before the COVID lockdown. So this story is our story. Every story in the Bible is our story too. There's a correlation, there's a metaphor, there's a metaphysical meaning. There's a number of reasons. This is our story. This is not about a bunch of dead people. This is about us. So, in any building process, in any process of building the new, you have to take down and tear down the old. Any, any builders can tell you this. You don't build upon things that have already been damaged. You don't. And so this is what the children of Israel had to do. They had to tear down those walls. They had to completely demolish everything and rebuild it as a new. And the first thing that you have to do in building and in consciousness 
is to have a solid foundation to build upon. So, how do we do that? Well, we discussed that in our last talk, in the same exercises, in the same curriculum that Jesus and the Buddha followed throughout their lives. It is the same thing. And I will, you know, if you forgot it, I will refresh your memory. Being accountable for our thoughts, understanding that everything that we experience has something to do with us. Understanding that there is no there, there is no them that impacts our experience and for us what we experience and what we interpret. Now again, I understand that that's that sometimes that's a difficult pill to swallow for some of us. And the reason why I recognize that is because that was a difficult pill for me to swallow, as I stated once before. But you have to have a foundation. You have to be anchored. And so this is an anchoring process. This is a process of, of investing within and pulling back and divesting your investments without. Not being so dependent on the external. If you are dependent on the external, then you are approval driven. Because we are beings of love. We want love. We desire love. That love is already within us. But if we are focused on the external, now we need other people to give it to us. And so that will dictate our behavior. And you never know what side of the bed people wake up on. And if you're just focusing on the external, hey, you might get it. You might get some, some love. And then you might get them on a bad day. But they're not feeling very loving. And if you're so focused on the external, then that's going to impact your day, too. Am I making sense? Okay. So it's important to be accountable for your thoughts, and it's important to build a relationship with ourselves. To meditate and spend time with ourselves and value ourselves and appreciate ourselves and understand that we are beautiful. We are beautiful. And we don't need anybody else to see that beauty. We need to see that beauty. And self-observation, learning to observe the things that enter into our consciousness, learning about those thoughts and keeping those thoughts under control so that they don't become like those little children running around unruly and stuff like that, just doing everything that they want, just doing whatever they want to do. Where we experience turmoil and chaos and suffering. I'm going to read a quote. I'm going to read lots of quotes. Um, one of the books that I would recommend that each and every one of us get, uh, get is Heart-Centered Metaphysics which was written by Paul Hasselbeck, Reverend Paul Hasselbeck. Now, this is the foundational book uh, that if you are ever in, in endeavoring to become a licensed unity teacher or take your spirituality to a deeper level or become a unity minister, you're going to have to get this book. And there are four metaphysical classes, well, four metaphysical classes, metaphysics classes, that you will have to take. Preliminary classes before you even get into ministerial school or wherever your endeavors are leading you to. There's Metaphysics 1, Metaphysics 2, Metaphysics 3, and Metaphysics 4. They're all four separate spiritual uh, education and enrichment classes that you will have to take. So I'm going to read, uh, first I'm going to read something from Charles and Cora Fillmore from The Twelve Powers. Self-observation, we must learn to watch our consciousness, its impulses and desires, as the chemist watches his or her solutions. We form our own consciousness, and we alone are responsible for the results. From the book of uh, Heart Center Metaphysics by Reverend Paul Hasselbeck, which discusses this, one of the most effective ways to gain greater self-knowledge 
is through the process of compassionate self-observation. The primary purpose of self-observation is to discern the movements of beliefs, thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and opinions in our own consciousness. Only in this way can we distinguish between what is desirable and what is undesirable at any given moment. Some persons never take the time for sincere and calm self-observation and consequently find it difficult, even impossible, to change their consciousness. Error is a choice and it originates in consciousness. Self-observation is a method to detect error. It is important to point out, however, that self-observation must not become self-condemnation. So what they're saying is basically, if you find some error, be loving with yourself. First of all, be grateful for that you found it because it was probably, you know, moving around in the background. You know, well, at least that's how it's always been for me. It, 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 it operates just under my conscious awareness, so I don't even know it's there. So if I don't know it's there, I can't do anything about it. But once I know it's there, now I can do something about it. Now, so I'm grateful. The first thing I experience is gratitude. I am grateful. Thank you so much, Spirit, for helping me to tell me to reveal this to me. Thank you. And being compassionate, understanding that you didn't know. You really didn't know. I mean, in the way you did, but in your conscious awareness, the part that you really focus through, the lens that you see, you really did. And now that you know better, you can do better. So be compassionate with yourself. So gradually through these processes, now I'm going to get to start getting to the good part. Gradually through these processes, as you're doing this, you will begin to learn about yourself, as I'm inferring. Your consciousness will begin to reveal surprises. You have a lot of surprises about you that you don't even know. I, think, I, I understand that you think you know yourself, but I can promise you there's a, there's a lot of surprises that you don't know. There's a lot of good stuff in there that you don't know. Some of it may have happened in an early childhood. Other things you've been constantly saying to yourself in the background for years. And so they gradually took hold as you gradually believed them. And so it became such a part of your existence, you don't even realize it's there. So, it's important to understand that negative self-related ideas are the sole perpetrator of whatever suffering, conflict, lack of abundance or prosperity, and yes, wait for it, illness and sickness. That's also a difficult pill for some of us to fuck with as well. That our thoughts can actually contribute to our physical well-being. But I want you to think about this. Now, the body naturally has a tendency to heal itself. Naturally. Okay? However, if you are Using your energy towards negativity, you are sapping your body from the energy, the necessary energy that it needs to self-correct itself. It is a fascinating, I don't want to say machine, but bio-machine or something, it's fascinating. And it naturally heals itself. But when we take away that energy because we're putting that energy in erroneous thoughts and beliefs, the body then doesn't have enough energy to repair itself or to fight off um, 
to fight off uh, uh, diseases as far as our immune system and things like that. As we increase the dissonance in our body, our cortisol levels raise. Our cortisol levels raise. Our cortisol it, it is like a part of a fight or flight mechanism, and what that does is that definitely lowers the, or inhibits, it inhibits our immune system. So it makes us susceptible to viruses and germs and things like that. So this is why meditation, being at peace, being calm, being centered, being inwardly directed and things like that helps to strengthen us. Helps to strengthen us. So let's go back to the children of Israel. Again, you can't build on, 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 old, on the old. You got to tear the old down. And so in unity, we have teachings in how we actually do that. They're called denials and affirmations. Denials to tear down those old limiting beliefs, to take back our power that we've given to them. These limiting beliefs are not real unto themselves. And what I mean by that is if something is true, it is true regardless of whether you believe it or not. <coughs> For example, spirit. You don't have to believe in spirit. You don't. You do not have to believe in spirit. It is still true regardless of whether we believe it or not. It is the animating force, you know, behind these bodies. You know, if your spirit's not in this body, this body collapses like, uh, you know, like those puppets. You know, somebody like those little puppets on the string or whatever, and somebody just like kind of like drops it away. See, the puppet just collapses, you know, that's exactly what would happen. With no spirit, no animation in the body. You don't have to believe in it, though. But error, you do. You have to believe in it for it to exist. That is the difference between truth and error. Truth does not require our belief. Error does. So I'm going to read another quote from Metcalf Center Metaphysics. Again, get this book. It is important to point out that by the term denials, we do not mean suppression or ignoring the challenges in our lives. In fact, in order to successfully utilize the tools of denial and after denials and affirmations, we must first admit or recognize the present state of affairs that include the facts as well as our thoughts and feelings about the facts. This is a healthy use of self-awareness and self-knowledge. Remember what we were talking about, I was talking about last time. Know thyself. It is important to know thyself, to know what you will call into yourself. Remember, thoughts and beliefs form to create a call. It's a call. And that call will bring something to it every time. So know thyself to know what you will call into yourself. use of self-awareness and self-knowledge. Then, if we choose to release a belief that is not for our highest good, we refuse to give it any more power. Remember, correct use of denial does not repress error belief thoughts or feelings. Rather, it releases the energy or power we have invested in them. So I want you to think about that. Remember, again, Thoughts and beliefs form to create a power surge that can literally move mountains. It is a reality changer. It changes and reshapes our reality. If we think it and we believe it, it is so for us. It may not be so for someone else in their world, but it is so for you. Anything that you think and believe is so for you. So denial helps to take that power back and allow that error of belief to go back to the nothingness from which it came. All right. 
Denials are used each time a person becomes aware of a thought, feeling, belief, or attitude that is not in alignment with their good and what is desired. They are used each time there is awareness of a thought, belief, feeling, or attitude that denies one's true nature. Denials are constructed in the present tense and in the first person. It can be spoken silently or audibly. For example, if you become aware of thoughts about not having enough money, you can gently say, I give no power to thoughts of not having enough money. I give no power, life, or substance to thoughts of lack. Now, when you use denials, that is like tearing down that wall. Now, just keep in mind that this is not a one-time thing. You have you built up reserves of these negative thoughts. We all have. So that means there's going to be repeated use of these denials until you begin to see the results that you want, that you desire. Now, before you say a denial, you want to think about a truth statement. A truth statement that automatically, that automatically conflicts with that denial. This is where you anchor your thoughts before you say you're denied. So, for example, I'm a child of God. That's one true statement, okay? Um, spirit is the source of all of my abundance. That's a true statement. I'm not here to tell you the true statement. This is your true statement. But you use this as an anchor to then <laughs> hold on to by which then you can then pronounce to this denial, you are not real. You hold on to that true statement, and then you pronounce to that denial, you are not real. I do not give you any power. Am I making any sense? Okay. All right. It helps to visualize. It helps to visualize what you want to see take place. This is important. Our imagination is like our God's eye. That is our true eye. This, this is our eyes that are not limited by time nor space. This is our eyes that can see and help us bring forth things into this reality. So use your imagination while you're holding on to this truth statement. And then pronounce, and then pronounce your denial. And tell that, tell that error of thought that it is not real. That is how it works. Now I'm going to get an affirmation, which is a truth statement. Affirmations are more than positive thinking. Affirmations are more than possibility thinking. Affirmations are realization thinking. Realizations, when we know that we know something is, is, well, realization is when we know that we know something is true regardless of our appearances or circumstances. Realization is a state of inner conviction that involves thinking and feeling the truth. After our beliefs are erased by denials, affirmations train our minds into right thinking and feeling. An affirmation is the process whereby we claim and declare what is already true at the level of divine mind. The absolute realm, it is a statement of truth. An affirmation establishes the truth about oneness or beingness in our seemingly limited consciousness in the relative realm, regardless of our outer experiences or any previous beliefs or attitudes. If possible, a, a heart-centered metaphys metaphysician uses the power of imagination, well, I already said that, with affirmation. Visualize the truth. See it outpouring into your experience in the world. 
Using affirmations is building up, it is build up, strengthens, and empowers a higher, more elevated state of consciousness. For example, after denying, after denying power, life, and substance to thoughts of lack, one could claim, for I am abundance, or I am the Christ, or I am prosperous, or spirit is the source of all of my abundance. These are true statements that you hold on to when you declare what is not true. Now, this actually correlates in psychology with the power of suggestion. You actually have the ability to tap into, you know, like hypnotists, you know, who can hypnotize people through suggestion and in, in order to, to do, as far as to, to create whatever positive habits they want. You don't have to be hypnotized. This is your own version of hypnosis. Of hypnosis. This is a science. Again, I do not, in my world, science and spirituality are one. They don't live in different places. Not in my world. I'm not here to, you know, to disagree with you if they live differently in your world. It's not a problem. But in my world, they are one. So, how I learned about the power of denials and affirmations personally was, it was around uh, 2017. And I noticed that there were a couple of ailments that I had, and I had this congestion um, that every time I woke up in the morning, it's like, I couldn't breathe. It's like I, had, I was just completely congested with, you know, mucus. Okay, and so I would get rid of it, or just go to the toilet to, you know, blow my nose. And um, I noticed that, and I, you know, I don't mean to, you know, have you feel any kind of way as far as disgusted, but I mean, I noticed that it, my mucus was dark. Okay, and I didn't understand what was going on. And I was a little hesitant about going to the doctor at first because, you know, we hold doctors at such a high level in our society that, you know, it's like they become, it's like whatever they pronounce, you know, it's like it's all, all of a sudden it becomes real. And so before I actually want to go to the doctor, you know, um, I want to try to do some things myself because, you know, I grew up in unity. I grew up in unity. But I didn't want a doctor to tell me what something was and next thing you know, I believed in it. You know, and then next thing you know, I, had, I, I couldn't get rid of it. You know? I didn't want that. I knew on my own, I'm not saying that that would be your truth. That was, I know my limitations. And I, I respect doctors. You know, and I didn't want a doctor to tell me something, and then all of a sudden I believe in it. And then I can't get rid of it because why? With my thoughts and beliefs. You know? So I said, you know something? Let me try these affirmations and now. I suppose I grew up in unity. Might as well. Let's try it. You know? So, I did mine a little bit different. First, I thought about some forgiveness statements. And I forgive, release, surrender, let go of any thoughts, beliefs, or investments in sickness, disease, or ailments of any kind. So I said. And then I said, you know, then I said, I deny any power in thoughts, beliefs, or investments in sickness, disease, or ailments of any kind. For I affirm, I am one with spirit. I affirm, I am a limitless being. And I affirm that I align my mind with spirit. And I affirm that this alignment heals this mind and this body. So I said that every day. And you know what? It went away. I don't exactly know when it went away, but it went away, I guess, a couple of three. All I know is one after, I was like, wait a minute, I don't have to, it's not here anymore. It's 
not here anymore. Hmm. What about what about my back? Actually, I, didn't, I wasn't using ailments. That's what, this is what brought on the ailments part. Because I had my little back problem. I'm my back, I said, I got to do something with my back too. You know, my back was you know been hurting and stuff like that. You know, and I'm like, mm, let's try it. Why not? It's not gonna hurt. You know, let's just see. So then I added ailments to it. You know, and I don't know. I remember, uh, you know, calling my mom up and, and tell, I said, yo, my back doesn't hurt anymore. You know, I don't know exactly when it happened. You know, next thing you know, I wouldn't have those problems anymore. Hmm. Okay. Later on, as I got into ministerial school, I began to add other things to it because this is something that I, I, I use just regularly. Um, so in ministerial, you know, I learned about the twelve powers. So I, you know, and I, I, I use one of the twelve powers, the power of renunciation. You know, I renounce and eliminate from my consciousness any thoughts, beliefs, or investments in sickness, disease, or illness of any kind. Yeah, sure it is. I have not been ill or sick since then to now. So, I believe it works. So in my mind, it works. In my world, it works. Now, what do you believe? Because that's what you will experience. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here with all of these ideas and about our limitless nature and things like that. Well, I want you to look around you. Look around. Everybody, please, look, look, look around. This is our sanctuary. This is a physical representation of our Jerusalem. Unity of New Orleans is our Jerusalem. And you know something? We're not the same person anymore. We are not the same person anymore. That's why you didn't want this live streaming now. Why? Because we're not the same people anymore. Some of us would rather be at home and watch this on, 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 you know, in our slippers and stuff like that. After COVID, we're not the same person. We're not. But I want you to think about, because this is a wonderful legacy that was, that, that was left to us by Mama Murphy, by Reverend Dr. Ruth Childress Murphy. A wonderful legacy. I want you to think about what is what are some things that, that you would like to see here because this community, that this church serves you. It serves you. And so the board and, 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 and Reverend Mary Beth and myself, we want to know. We want to know the pulse of the people. We want to know what would make, what, what, what is it that that, that, that you need for your, feel, for, 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 for your spiritual fulfillment here in your spiritual home. This is my spiritual home too. This is my spiritual home. This, I've been here since I was seven years old. Six going on seven in YOU. This is my home too. You know what I've never seen here? You know what I like to see? And you know, I'm gonna put that down. Um, but we would like to know what you think. So we're gonna we, we're, we're creating a, 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 a survey, a questionnaire to interact with who we serve. Because we serve you. It's not the other way around. We serve you. So we want to know what's important to you. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see some prayer chapters available for prayer. And, 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 and that would uh, be, be, be able to be willing to, to, to stand up here or be somewhere uh, present where somebody needs prayer. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of times I need prayer. You know? And it, it would be nice if there was a prayer chapter that I could pray with. I mean, I can pray with Eric Mary Beth, or you can pray with me. But at the same time, some prayer chapters, why not pass on? that information about empowering prayer to other people so that they can then spread it out. It doesn't have to be just with the, with the minister. So, you know, because I'm thinking about it, 
Maybe I should contribute to it. Maybe I should go ahead and, 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 and train uh, a group of people uh, to be prayer chaplains. And since I'm thinking about it, obviously it's a, a, a divine idea that I have, you know, hey, I'm not just gonna sit up there and just, you know, say something and just sit back and try to dictate stuff. No, I wanna get involved. What do you wanna get involved in? What would make this place your Jerusalem? Because it is our Jerusalem. What would make it even more your Jerusalem? So, there is a survey coming. We're getting the questions together. We haven't gotten all, all, all together yet, but there's a survey coming. All right, because you, we want to gauge the pulse of the people. Because you are so important. So, in closing, I want you to think of, or think, think of, or imagine a world where our dreams and divine ideas would be allowed to flourish and prosper and grow without our limiting beliefs, strangling them. What would that world look like? Jesus talked about this too when he talked about the, 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 the parable of the sower. He was talking about those seeds. He was talking about those beautiful seeds. And some of the seeds went here, and some of the seeds went there, and some birds came and swooped them up, and some fell onto rocky ground, and this and that, this and that. So we're talking about creating good soil so these seeds can grow and flourish. What kind of a world do you think we would, we would experience? What do you think that world would look like? What kind of world do you want to be a part of? Do you want to be a part of a world that tells you where, where, what you can't do? Or do you want to be a part of a world that affirms what you can do and be? Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. Um, you know, didn't catch that totally when he said this is his home church. Is everybody aware that when Stephen was six years old, he was here running up and down those stairs there with Mama Murphy, who founded this beautiful sanctuary and grew up here. And when he talked about calling his mom, a lot of you know his mom, Sheila Gotro, who was, of course, here with Stephen. And, uh, went to New York and started singing with the opera there, and she sang here. What was it, about six months ago, five months ago? It just seems like a bird. Anyway, a lot of you all probably know Sheila Gautreaux, but I didn't know if uh, she was in Houston now. Maybe um, you wonder where that was Stephen's mom. Anyway, um, thank you so much again, and you'll be thinking about some of those things that we're going to send out the survey before we actually give it to you so you can think about it ahead of time and just see what you all would like and need and would like to help out with and so forth. So, would you please stand now and sing hymn number 95, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. 95, page 95.
think of as prayer and meditation because of its importance for us to be able to reconnect with God, the source. So close your physical eyes now and relax. This is your time to let all your earthly worries and problems go. It's a time to quit thinking, quit feeling, and start being. Just being at one with God. This is your time to really experience your oneness with God. Reestablishing your awareness of your oneness with the one power and one presence is necessary on a regular basis because we forget. We get distracted in this world. We get influenced by all of the false gods out there in the world. False gods like power, competition, consumerism, all of which distract us from what is really important in life, what is really going to make us happy and peaceful. This is your time to reconnect with your highest self, your nobility, your purity, your goodness, your ability to love and be loved. Let go and let God right now. That's all there is. Open up to God's guidance. You are a divine being having a physical experience. And this physical experience is good. Everything that happens can help you grow if you just turn your life over to spirit and let yourself see every issue and every person and even your own doubts and fears and stresses with Christ vision. Christ vision. Life is there as a classroom to help us practice and build our faith and patience and love and wisdom of all kinds. Life is here to help us understand and overcome anger, doubt, stress, sadness, loneliness, and ego separation from God and other people. What a beautiful and perfect classroom this is to help us awaken to and evolve in the highest possible ways. What an incredible spiritual path is this life to those who have the eyes to see. Unto him that hath, it shall be given. Dear God, we thank you for all the opportunities that life offers us to grow and wake up. Help us to let go and let you show us the way. May we rest in the silence of prayer with that thought. moment 
the present moment, which is our reality. Any sadness from the past or stress about the future is futile. None of it is real. The only thing which is real is right here, right now. And you are safe and secure in this blessed sanctuary with your sacred sangha, your spiritual family, and the realization that all is well. You are safe and secure. <clears throat> Relax into the oneness of God right now. Imagine that you have left your ego at the door. Your ego is the part of you that likes to be separate from others and God. Your ego is competitive and wants to feel better than others. But it also suffers because in its false sense of separateness, it also feels less than others sometimes and thus feels sad and mad and stressed. So for a moment, here and now, practice leaving your ego, your what we call lower self. Let your higher self win the inner battle. Be a spiritual warrior. Fight for your freedom from your lower self. Ask God to help you. Let go and let God. In reality, there is no battle except in your mind. You are divine. Accept your divinity, your true self. In reality, you are completely divine. There is no other part of you. Your so-called ego is the part of you that imagines that you are apart from God and separate from the unity of all life. <clears throat> this is the time to open up to that reality and let yourself truly feel that in every fiber of your soul and every cell of your body, let yourself truly realize the reality of your divinity and rest in the silence and in the assurance that you are one with God There is nothing else. Rest in the silence with that thought, with that pure and unadulterated thought of who you really are. As you go through this week, be very aware of your thoughts and false belief systems that you encounter in your mind. As often as possible, maybe every 30 minutes, come back to the sacred mantra, I am a child of God. I am divine. I let go and let God guide my thoughts I am a child of God. I am divine. I let go and let God guide my thoughts and actions. And may you be a model of peace and love to all those many who need your modeling and guidance.
presence and love. Give yourself the love and peace you deserve by letting go and letting God guide your every thought and step. You are not alone. May you see with Christ's vision, with clarity, and may you be happy and healthy as you so deserve and which is your firm right. Amen. May we bless our offering. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, it is so now. Just to piggyback a little on what Stephen said, we will be having a survey come out soon because we've got membership Sunday, the third Sunday of August. So those of you who would like to um, request membership, renew your membership, and so forth. So keep that in mind. For now, will you please rise for our closing? The light of God surrounds you. The love of God unfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you wherever you are. God is and you.
you are safe and secure. The Lord watches between me and thee while we are absent one from the other and helps us to know that we are all one in the Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And a peace out.